Hello and welcome everybody. Hope you're having a great day. Why the God of the Quran hate other religion? The mistake we make always when we judge Allah, the supposed God of the Quran, that we put him in the high place that he is supposed to be. And you are trying to be logical with a God. He does not have logic. You have to differentiate first between the alleged deity and the writer of the Quran. The Quran writer is the product of his environment and he spoke words from his environment in which he was raised. Why do you find in the Quran verses that indicate Allah getting involved in a fight with a human being? Is the creator of the universe getting angry and insulting a human being or it is just human nature to fight and insult each other? This issue does not make sense and is an understatement of God attribute and it's make him weak and hopeless to the point that he is having an argument with a human being or he is interested in what human being does in their daily life or attention to the detail that are no use and it does not have any benefit. But when you put these texts in their historical context and time, you say yes, this is okay and it is normal because the society that time does not seem to have a problem with it. When you have the writer of the Quran born and raised in his environment that surrounded him, it is logical to speak like them same as if somebody insulted you and said bad words to you you reply to him the god of the quran does not have a pragmatic thinking and he is too eager to reply to anyone who insulted him he does not know tolerance or ignoring insults because when you reply to them it makes you look weak the second issue that i wanted to talk about is the interest rate and why did the Quran writer ban it? If we use the same standard and put things in their historical context, of course, it's all a matter of conclusion because we don't have information about why exactly the interest rate was banned, but we can make conclusion according to the environment that Islam was born in. If you, for example, who is the founder of the new religion and the people who follow you are all poor people and lower class citizens all don't have money and a few of them who are from the middle class you as a founder of this new religion what is your benefit to lend money to people with interest rate you have no benefit and it is in your interest to not allow it and make it illegal but if you are the one who is rich and the founder of a new religion it will be in your benefit to allow the use of the interest rate and in this case you can benefit from lending money to others but if you are not benefiting and you want the money to come in in this case logically you won't be interested in allowing interest rate this is just conclusion not a definite answer that we can know for sure it could be other reason that we don't know cause we don't split the chest of muhammad to see what exactly was he thinking about to judge his legislation and regulation the question now is is this a good thing or a bad here we fall into the problem that the interest rate is something necessary and logical because the value of the money changes with time if the value of the money does not change with time we can say the interest rates are bad why are you lending me a hundred pound and I have to give it back to you a hundred and ten pound later because the hundred pound that I landed to you one or two years ago does not equal the hundred pound today and that ten pound is the value that has been lost and if you don't give me that ten pound I am the one who is going to lose in this business interest rate is the added value to the money according to time that passes so the 
banks or the people who lend money they won't lose this look logical to me and has meaningful explanation because the value of things change with time that is why when you go to an islamic bank that claim that it does not deal with interest rate and you tell them i want to buy a house with 200,000 pounds do they give you 200,000 pounds and tell you to give it back to them after 20 years no they are not donkeys they are bank and they know this thing and they cannot be fooled they tell you okay you want to buy this house with 200,000 we will sell it to you with 250,000 without interest rates here what they do is buy the house for you and then sell it to you with a high price because they add the value of the interest rates of the 20 years so it is the same just they make it halal same as the guy who drinking in the woods and found a dead chicken then he slaughtered it in the name of Allah to make it halal same as the Islamic banks go around the interest rate by selling with an expensive price to make it halal and they say it's not an interest rate it's just selling with a high price it's the same thing you just change the way you do things so the interest rate is something logical at prohibiting its use is something illogical and does not make sense because the value of thing changes in this life and you cannot use fixed criterion and value all the time we have to adopt due to the changes in our environment to keep up with it and the last and the third issue that i was going to put in the historical context and try to make sense of it is the moral behavior of the prophet and his companion and why people who wrote this thing do not seem to have a problem when they were recording this event and facts as well here we have to see the difference in the historical context of these facts and events things that we found in the quran and sunnah and seem to us that is immoral we seen it as immoral according to our context and time and we say this thing that muhammad did is something immoral but if we put things in their historical context and we compare things to moral standards that time all what he did was acceptable in his time there is no problem with them recording this and publishing it and they look at it as a normal thing and a normal human behavior for example the prophet married aisha as a six years old is something normal in the context which the messenger lived it was an ordinary thing to do or to own a human being as a slave it was normal the people who write about the slavery when the slavery was something normal they don't seem to have issue recording this thing and if we want to give a good example of this imagine in the future the war will be something immoral in the future they will say look at these people recording wars and killing of the people and it is immoral why they are doing it are they don't aware that the war is immoral and why they don't make an effort to hide this information all this is a beautiful thing that show that the quran or the religion text generally is the sun of its environment and the value that those people of the 7th century hold it's their value that they came up with and we in the 21st century have a different and more advanced value from them and that is why we see children marriage as immoral and they see it as normal if there is a wise god and he is all knowing he will know that a human value and behavior change with time and he will send his last message with the best that human can achieve in the term of moral and values he should force this value that time and we will find it and know that this is from the creator of the universe and not some caravan robber but we found it in line with the moral 
prevailing at the time and it is of no use today this is why when you came up today and talk about the problem in the islam for example the children marriage or the slavery muslim attack you and convict you of using a weak narration and story in order to destroy islam just because they're still using old values and the world today is changed for the better thank you guys for watching and see you again